Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 12 and today we're returning with two massive games with our Canaries as we take on promotion hopefuls Bristol City at home and Middlesbrough away on Boxing Day. Before we play the games though, shout out Norwich for getting on off camera. And of course in the last episode you saw our 3-1 defeat to Nottingham Forest at home and in our 3-1 victory away in Wales against Cardiff City. I then played 10 games off camera all in the championship and as you can see our run during this stretch has been a bit like Jekyll and Hyde really. Really good and then really bad. We started the run off camera with a victory against Middlesbrough by two goals to one. Uh, Karamoko Dembele, always great to see him scoring again. And uh, Harrison Reed, who scored our goals in this game as uh, so we got a big victory there. And our following game was a 3-1 victory away at Blasky Stadium against Reading where Adam Ida bagged another two goals in his, well right now, incredible championship campaign where he is still the top scorer. And uh, Jamal Lewis also also scored his first goal for the club in this game as well. Uh, after that, a 3-1 victory away at Brentford uh, as we got revenge on the side and knocks out of the EFL Cup third round. Uh, Dembele scoring his second goal in three games. Eze scored again and uh, Buendia wrapped up the points very late on in this one in a superb performance. And following that, back-to-back -back wins as we extended the win streak. First at home to MK Dons, a newly promoted side, by three goals to nil. Uh, Ludvika Jorke scored his first goal for the club, gave him the start in this game and he didn't let me down a uh, six foot six unsurprisingly his first goal for the club was a header and then Ben Thompson bad a superb race as well the first goal was an absolutely glorious volley uh, from range uh, as he scored his first two goals of the club there as our new signings got us to win in that game and after that a 2-1 victory away at the KCOM it was a bit whole city with Ida and Brewster scoring his first goal for the club as well before Hull grabbed a consolation goal in stoppage time so six wins on the trot for Norwich City everything was going really well but then it all changed. We started off with a goalless draw at home to my team Millwall where Eze missed a penalty late on as we recorded a stalemate there. Then we had a 2-2 draw at home to Huddersfield Town. Eze and Buendia the goal scorers but sadly couldn't collect the three points in that one either. So back-to-back -back draws, not terrible results there against two decent sides. But to start off December... Three straight defeats in a row. First away at Deepdale against Preston, uh, Sean Maguire scoring, and then Scott Sinclair uh, making it 2-0 as Preston got the win in this game. And I was thinking, okay, it's, you know, it's fine. We're going to have a blip every now and then. That's fair enough. And then we lost 3-0 at home to Birmingham City. What happened in this game, I literally don't know, but we just got destroyed here by the Blues. Uh, they went 1-0 up and then 2-0 up right before the break, and then with 11 minutes to go, a comical own goal, shock horror, as uh, Zimmerman put the ball into his own net in a catastrophic performance there in a game which should have been a comfortable victory. 3-0 loss at home, and then our final game off camera, my goodness gracious me, we're away at the Bet365 Stadium, uh, Stadium against Stoke City. And we're 2-0 upright, 54 minutes in. First point, Deer scoring, and then Adam Ida converting a penalty. And I'm thinking, okay, it's fine. You know, the run of, you know, winless games is going to be over here. Four on the trot, not great, but at least we're bouncing back. 2-0 up, cruising to the victory. And then, Bruno Martins Indy scores from a corner, makes it 2-1. And 11 minutes to go. I mean, talk about capitulation. Tyrese Campbell makes it 2-2. Then he scores again to make it 3-2, and then in the 90th minute, Sam Klukos makes it 4-2, and I swear to goodness gracious heaven, I went to the away fans to try and calm them down after the game, and I was getting pelted with objects, and not surprisingly so. I think my own players were pelting me with objects behind me. I mean, how on earth we capitulated there, I don't know, but 4-2 to final score, another defeat, that's now three on the bounce, and no wins in our last five games. Absolutely catastrophic run of form for the Canaries and I literally do not know what's happened. So right now on the championship table as you can see we've dropped down to fourth place into the playoffs after no wins in our last five. We are now seven points off the league leaders Nottingham Forest, three off Bristol City, our first opponents today in second and we're only two points ahead of Blackburn Rovers in seventh outside the playoffs who also have a game in hand as well. To put it plainly Norwich City were high flying and now we are dropping down very quickly. And also so confirmation for you as well, Adam Ida is still the top scorer in the championship right now with 15 goals in 19. Well, to be fair, he's only scored one goal in his last five or possibly six games, and that came from a penalty as well. So he has, he has started to slow down a little bit, but as things stand, he is on course to win the Golden Boot. And also, answers on a postcard, how on earth is Tom Tribal doing this? <laughs> you know, last season he won player of the season. How, how is he doing this? I literally don't understand why the media are 
so in love with this guy. Oh, don't get me wrong, he's alright, he's pretty decent, but I, he's averaging a higher rating than anyone else in the championship right now. And I think it's just because we play him as a deep-line playmaker in the central midfield, so he doesn't really do anything but retain possession. And to be fair, he rarely does give the ball away, so maybe that's why, I don't know. But um, regardless, anyway, first game today is going to be at home to Bristol City, and after a run of five straight defeats, we desperately need to get... A victory here. Sorry, uh, five games about a win. We desperately need to get a victory here. And uh, right now in the injury report, as you can see, everyone is fighting fit. I've actually been quite lucky with injuries uh, throughout the course of this series so far. Everyone's fine. But now I've said that, you're going to watch like four or five players go down today. But so this will be our team for the game. 4 2 3 one. I have been switching between this and our Gigan press a few times in this run of camera. But as I always say, I think this is our best system. And uh, this will be our team for the game. We've got Farinas in goal. A battle of Lewis, Zimmerman, Godfrey, and Byron with Tribal and Fernandez through the middle. Got to go with the boys you trust in this scenario right now. Not playing well. You need the lads you know you can always depend upon. Uh, Further forward, Ize on the left, Dembele on the right, and Buendia does support either up top and on the bench. Craft holding Aaron's Thompson, Cantwell, Puki, and Brewster as well. So first game, need to bounce back here and put an end to our winless run. Come with you, Canaries. I'm going to keep it calm in the dressing room. I know how hard you're all working to end this poor run of form. Today's the day. And uh, how do you... And of course it's Buendia switch off. How do you switch off from hearing that? Today's the day, boys. This is where we end the poor runner form. Oh, I don't care. Shut up, gaffer. I certainly would take a point in this game. You know, three straight defeats. Taking on a side right now in the automatic promotion places. A draw would not be a bad result at all. But at some point, we're going to have to start winning. So a win today would be massive as Ize goes on a lovely run down left-hand side here. And I'll plays it back towards Tribal. And out wide is Jamal Lewis. Come on, Canaries. Early goal. That'll be amazing. Back to Tom. As we look for an opening. And it's Buendia. And you know he can strike him. Oh, just over the bar. Buendia is like that sort of player where, you know, he goes missing every now and then, but then there's always that one game where he just explodes and you remember that this guy is just absolutely extraordinary. His tribal hits it to Ize, who nods it back to him. Lovely ball by Tom, and now Lewis crosses. Yes! And after a bit of a barren run of form for Adam Ida, he's back on the score sheet. Only one goal in his last five from the penalty spot. But now he's opened the scoring 14 minutes in. To be fair to Tom Tribal, I was sneakily dissing him pre-game. He's had a great start, hasn't he? Maybe this is why he's averaging a higher rating than anyone else in the championship right now. Great cross by Jamal and Ida. What a finish. 1-0 in front early. You see him put his fingers in his ears there. As if to say, I can't hear you, boss. I can't hear the criticism. Man, he's cocky little shit. This 19-year-old. I love it. As he's there, he goes on the run here. Plays it back towards Tommy. To be fair, right now he's orchestrating things. As Buendia pops that wide towards Dembele. Excellent start from the Canaries here. Buendia! Puts it just wide. Great start. This is what we need right now. A very, very, very good beginning to the game. Bristol City looks shell-shocked out there as Fernandez has just picked up a knock. But he should be okay to soldier on for now. And I, I love his body language as well. He's aggressive out there. You know, he's captaining the side out there. I think it's just his second start in the championship this season. But he always puts in a good shift. And again, these are the games where you go with the boys you trust. The players you know you can depend upon. There are better players than Gelson Fernandes in this team. But you can always rely on him. 45 minutes to go. Still leading by one. This will be a big three points here. Free kick for Norwich. Ah. Oh. No, I mean, I, 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 I knew he was going to score that. I knew he was going to score. He's just too fucking good. I mean, January is right around the corner. And the question is, is Buendia's cartwheeling? Is he cartwheeling out of Caro Road? That's the real question. 2-0 to the Canaries. What a goal by Emmy. Surely we're not going to keep him here longer than this season. If we fail to go up, he's gone. 10 minutes to go. Still leading by two. And this result will put us back into second place. If we can hold on to it, as Todd finds Buendia. Lovely little passing move here. Oh, it's a glorious goal. That's a wonderful goal there from Norwich City. That was a beautiful passing move. And, you know, I, I said this in the last episode. The reason why I love this system is because we play some really good football. Look at this. This is absolutely beautiful passing and movement. And Dembele wraps up the move with a clinical finish. 3-0 Canaries. What a response. And I think this run we've had here kind of sums up the championship as a division. We've had a couple of poor draws. We've had some catastrophic defeats, some total capitulations. And then how do we respond? Second place Bristol City after no wins in our last five. 3 nil, and some glorious football getting played and some lovely goals as well. So passionately, I'll say I'm very pleased with the result and your performance. Everyone is extremely delighted out there. That, that was a glorious return to winning ways. And again, that sort, of shot, that sort of sums up the championship to me. 
you know, you can go on these runs against teams where you expect to win pretty comfortably and you keep on losing. And then against the promotion play, uh, promotion hopeful, you can destroy them with some really good football. That that right there sums up the championship. It's just so unpredictable. And you best believe Emi Buendia was playing for a transfer in that game. You best believe that goal was, I'd say, motivated by his desire to leave Caro Road in January. You know, Buendia this season has not exactly set the league alight like I was predicting. I mean, he's, you know, he's been good, but he's not exactly been unstoppable at times. And for those wondering, there is interest in him right now. And the clubs that are interested are Atletico Madrid, Burnley, Porto, Juventus, Leon, and also Arsenal as well. So some big clubs are interested in uh, in signing him here. But the, the, the thing is this, unless we get a bid that matches valuation, I'm not letting him go. The fact of the matter is, he's got four years left in his deal, well, three and a half now. And he's only on 12.25 grand a week, which is obviously absolutely nothing. There is very little reason to cash in on him for an under than valuation bid because he's under contract for three and a half years. If we get a bid that matches the valuation, I'll let him go. But I think Buendia is worth double his estimated market valuation. In my opinion, he's worth £50 million. So unless we get at least a bare minimum of £45 million, I'm, I'm not letting him go. There's no need to. Okay, so moving into our second and final game of today's episode, we are away at the Riverside Stadium to take on Middlesbrough as we aim to stay in the top two on Boxing Day. Officially halfway through the season and as you can see right now sat in second place, only on goal difference though in what is right now a very tight race for promotion. Nottingham Forest can run away with it as things stand, but after two straight defeats and three in their last five, maybe they can be caught up by the chasing pack here. So big game here against fellow promotion hopefuls. Let's see if we can beat them back to back this season for the first game in the second half of the campaign. Uh, so yep, let's just dive straight into it. So no change to our tactics or to our lineups. Once again, we've got three in goal, but for of Lewis, Zimmerman, Godfrey and Sam Byron, who I must say, you know, Max Ahrens this season, I I thought he was going to set the championship alight. To be honest, I've preferred using Byram at right back. So Byram, uh, Tribune Fernandes through the middle of the park, Ize, Dembele, Buendia, Sporting Ida up top, and on the bench, Kraft holding Ahrens, Thompson, Cantwell, Puki, and Brewster as well. So no change to tactics, no change to the lineup. Let's see if we have no sort of change to our performance either. Second game is Middlesbrough. Let's make it back to back wins. Come on, you Canaries. It is really annoying that Max Aarons just hasn't played well in this save so far because he's one of the best young fullbacks in the game. But I, got, I just can't seem to get the best out of him at the moment as Buendia slides through Ida, who looked to be pulled there, but he wasn't as Stojanovic picks up the loose ball. Yeah, I just, I just can't seem to get on with Max Aarons in this team and it's so frustrating as he's a down the left, wonderful run, good save, and Buendia turns in the rebound and I'll tell you this right now, if he's still here in February, I will be very, very surprised. It's 1-0, he's got his second in two, it was a shocking ball out from the goalkeeper and we punish him for it. He's a shot, well saved to be fair to him, but Buendia turns in the rebound and if he's not a Juventus or Leon or Arsenal, I will be stunned if he's still here in the championship in February. 1-0 Norwich, he's got to go. And again, give me 50 mil and he's yours lads, but I'm not selling him for anything less than that as Dembele now comes on the, on the run and Karamoko shot blocked and his second shot is well saved as it's still 1-0. What a start for Norwich and what a turnaround as well. Three straight losses, no wins in five and right now against two promotion hopefuls, we are just on fire as Buendia's cross is cleared. Danger still alive, Fernandez. Oh, go on Gelson. Oh, shot blocked, corner. Fernandez. nice ball out wide towards Sam Byram. And Byron will play it back towards Dembele. And now Fernandez on the edge. Back to Dembele. Oh, wonderful save there. As it's still 1-0. But what a start from Norwich. We are hammering the Borough right now. Surely a second goal is coming at some point. We're just in control right now. Sam Byron crosses to Ida off the woodwork. And Nathan Wood does want to make the tackle. Still 1-0. And obviously we've been so poor defensively this season. I never feel comfortable only leading by one. I want that cushion. No need to make changes, we just need to be a little bit more clinical here because we're getting chances, just not putting them to bed. A Zimmerman takes over and knocks that wide towards Jamal Lewis. Surely a second goal is coming here. Eze down the left, back to Tribal and now Fernandez. Oh! What did I say? You go with the boys you trust. Gelson Fernandez, first goal of the season. And we've put him back into our team. As vice captain, he wears the armband and Gelson for ah, oh, it's a contender for goal of the season. You go with the boys you trust when you're in a poor run of form, and I'll always trust our hard working team player, Gelson Fernandez. What a goal! 
Middlesbrough 2-0 down, surely on course for back-to-back -back wins. I love you, Gelson. He'd barely played this season, but I've put him back into the starting 11, reinstated him, and what a decision that is, as Brown's free kick is well saved by Farinas, as we still lead by two. And as I said before, you know, there are better players than him in this Norwich team, but it's, you know, there's no substitute for hard work. No, oh, as he wins it back here and goes down the right. I just, I love this guy, man. And what a pull. And I just couldn't get to it on time as Edwards clears. He's just, I love him. Oh, Gelson Fernandez. He's just a, he's just a hard working team player. And you just, you just can't substitute that. You really can't. Let's take off Buendia now and uh, hide him from the scouts in the stands <laughs> as we lead by two. 15 minutes to go, points in the bag. What a response from the Canaries after no wins in five. So points surely in the bag, Byron almighty collapse. Question is, can we get a third goal as Ben Godfrey finds Sam Byron down the right-hand side? Now Dembele takes over into Gelson. And now Ize slides in Dembele down the right. Can he cross? He'll peg it back towards Sam Byron. Shot saved and put behind for a corner. Still 2-0 and that means we are going to stay... Or I should say, yeah, we'll, we'll return to the automatic promotions and stay there in today's episode as well. Wonderful performance as Pookie almost wrapped it up. And so that is going to do it then. Final score, 2-0 to Norwich City. And what a performance from Gelson Fernandez. See, how did Tribal end up with a 9.0 and Fernandez fails to get the champagne? Tom, come on, mate. Be a team player and give it to the captain. You know he deserves it. But uh, regardless, 2-0 to the final score. A good win, boys. Well done. And after no wins in five games, I must say, heading into today's episode, I was quite worried. As Lewis is going to be out for 8-12 to 12 days. Should be okay without him. And Ize is out for 4-8 days. So just minor injuries there. And uh, we're okay with that. But I must say, I was quite, quite nervous heading today's episode. I thought we might have back-to-back -back defeats and no wins in seven. But instead, two very good victories and performances as well against two fellow promotion hopefuls puts us back into the top two as we cut the gap on Nottingham Forest leading the way to just four points. Long way to go. 22 games remaining. As we know, the championship's so competitive and so tight. But good to see Norwich back on track after a bit of a shaky run of form but that was today's episode of the football manager series guys so big thank you for watching really hope you have enjoyed it and if you did enjoy today's episode then please do drop a like uh, much love to you all have a fantastic day and we'll come back with games against um well I i'm thinking there might be a bid for buendia in this january run here so i think what we'll do is if buendia ends up leaving the club in january i'll come back for the first games without him uh, otherwise if he's still here then we'll come back in february and we'll come back with games against do you know what? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe maybe Charlton went at home and West Ham away to London games there. Not entirely sure. I guess I'll have to wait and see. But sometime, in my, uh, sometime in February, sorry, if Wendy is still here. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.